One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Wrong liquor. Knows that a nigga beers is spreading rumors like a motherfucking punk beers. My fit is a bed for a kidnapped victim. I love J O N. Let's go original, man, so we can get spotted, man. Play me one of them J O N tracks, man, that don't nobody even know about. Yeah, this some for all the essential workers right here. We back, we back. Where you been? We back, we back. Uh-huh. Come on, man, this gonna be on our Gangsta Grills mixtape. Oh, yeah. Bitch, we back. It's about that time. Oh, 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 we back. oh, 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 we back, yeah. we back, yeah. we back, yeah. again, uh -huh. they're 85 south, so I'm here with my kids, we do it, uh -huh. we get uh -huh. that money, yeah, right. we back uh -huh. on the road, and uh -huh. we still 85 south, let's go, we back, uh, got a bag for the shack, okay, uh, ain't gonna lie, I'm had to be here with y'all fools, so, uh. who this is, I hear a voice, yeah, uh -huh. look, I hear some noise. Yeah. Mr. Thanksgiving! Oh shit! <laughs> Do it one more time. You ready? Do it one more time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mr. Thanksgiving, go! Oh shit! We win. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We live it. Cause you know why? Uh-huh. We got Mr. Thanksgiving! Hold on. We back. I mean like a spine. If I said that we was leaving there, you know that I'm lying. Uh -huh. All the girls I had, shit, they all wasn't fine. But one thing I can say uh -huh. was shit, they all was mine. Okay. <laughs> you think so? They ain't shit. no nigga on the fucking law? Uh -huh. uh huh. When you ain't looking, you don't think a nigga can deep throw? Tell him uh -huh. deep throw. Deep throw. throw to a whole nother man. Damn. He thought that she was faithful till he found her on his fan. That ain't my business. Street that ain't nine. my business. Uh, three what she was doing with it when I was gone. That ain't my business. <laughs> three ninety nine. How much was it? Three ninety nine. How much was it? Bitch, that she found. I said, hold up, bitch. She ain't need no dime. Bitch, it's three ninety nine. It was three ninety nine, so I paid that shit. That's right. Damn. I ain't hate this shit. Uh -huh. Oh, a lot of niggas gonna hear this. And they gonna hate this shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. Nigga, you gonna bust the chip. Points. What the fuck is wrong with you, you man? I'm like, I'm like the gunshot on the mixtape. Yeah. You, you can't open them up. Y'all know y'all can't open up. Yeah, yeah, you a project baby. This nigga just opened the chip like he was smacking some ass. You don't know. <laughs> no, nope. that one, that, 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 that one got a uh, bulletproof vest on it. <laughs> they look, that's a, that's man. a new kind. <laughs> there was a point in my life where all the music in my car was a Gangsta Grill CD. Hell yeah. I, 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 me too. I mean, mm. an actual CD. Mm. I'm talking about some classic shit. Real mental shit. Mm -hmm. Like, all the niggas had one. Mm -hmm. Everybody you wanted to listen to, before they dropped the album, they had to go see drama and drop their dope ass Gangsta Grills mixtape. All the time. So it's like today, the trap, the trap going platinum. We gotta today. go crazy. All the way. Yeah, man, because this is not an episode. Mm -hmm. It's a mixtape. Oh! Yeah. We got the one and only. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thanksgiving, Ow! DJ the fuck drummer, What's up, y'all? in the trap with 85 It's only right. We got this motherfucking nigga that did the gangster grills in the trap with us, man. It's, man, listen. You it's already knew. It's an honor, it's man. Thanks for having me. Oh, Thanks Jesus for coming, man. Good. Appreciate you, dude. Love, you, man. Love. Love. You know what man the shit you did for the streets. Nah, good looking. Good looking. I'm talking about paying the motherfucking way for me. I'm talking about when it. Like when it made a whole nother, a whole you had nother to holler at them. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about change the game. It wasn't official. Like, it wasn't invented, but it was like he reinvented the whole mixtape game. The way people fuck with music right now is still going on like that. You feel me? Like you took you took the attention off of albums for so long. Like niggas weren't even trying to drop an album. They needed that mixtape. If you want to get the streets to listen to, first of all. If you ain't even seen your shit mm -hmm. for a minute and a half before mm -hmm. the song mm -hmm. come on, mm -hmm. you ain't official. Mm -hmm. Right. And you took a hell of a sacrifice mm -hmm. for the streets too with no. you hell know, of a having to go to mm -hmm. nigga fuck with the feds pictures, and yeah. all of that shit. Like nigga went to jail for CDs. For nigga, music, man. For music, bro. That's and, crazy. and changed the game, man. So we honored to have you here. Come on, man. Legendary. 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 Leg
Pleasure to be here, man. Pleasure to be here, Legends Only. Is it fair to say, like, if I ask y'all, is, is Gangsta Grills the most important mixtape series of all time? Like, I mean, yes. I'm talking about you made people listen to the whole shit. Mm. Right. And it's like, even artists that we weren't necessarily mm -hmm. all the way familiar with, that platform was so open where it's like, it wasn't the pressure of them being at the radio station having to try to freestyle mm -hmm. and not fuck up. It was like, mm -hmm. damn, run that shit back, yeah. but I didn't know. Hey, you can run that shit. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You get what I'm saying? Let's start it over. Did you press the button? I be, Did you I be touch telling the radio? I be telling people sometimes because then, you know, like the no DJ versions became a thing and everything. And I've seen people say, like, you know, I want to hear like mixtape without the drops. And it's a couple mixtapes out there without the drops, but it's just not the same feel. Like, you don't want to yeah, listen to Trap or Die without me talking that shit on there. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Even for the, uh, for the battle, um, he was just trying to get his songs together, but Jeezy called me like, yo, you got some of them songs like we could play without the drops? I was like, niggas don't want to hear them shits without the drops. You, you needed, you right. told yeah. me. Yes, I did. Nigga. Yeah, no, I <laughs> yeah, they want to hear that. They want to hear that shit on there. Right. Tell you what. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I tell you what. Tell you you what. take my motherfucking yeah. drop off there if you want to. Yeah, nigga. I mean, but I think so. I think it's, it's in that class. I'm talking about all the way back to, I mean, the, old in the 80s, DJ mm. Red Alert and yeah. all them types of mixtapes, right. like it's in that class right. where it's a period in time where you couldn't hear no music without hearing DJ drama or somebody saying, when are you going to get yeah. a, a DJ, DJ drama gangster grill? Yeah. Yeah. Man, the two of my favorite gangster grill mixtapes that I felt like was the two most slept on out the whole series. Okay, slept on means it's not one of them no, ones. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm okay. saying that it's not, like, it wasn't the I got one you. that ground broke. It wasn't like, popular it wasn't to, the, to the down. most common. They didn't break the artist to the next platform, okay. I think, but they were still two of the dopest ones. Mm. Motherfucker, Slick Puller mm. and Mac Bone. Four four a day was hard. Oh, uh, hell, and shout big country came too. Shout to country, shout to all my guys. Yeah, OBSC. Yeah, yeah. OBSC. That was my, that was my gang. I mean, Dro did his motherfucking thing. If it wasn't for Tip, really, I don't know if Gangsta Girls would be what it was because you know he was the, like when me and him was coming up, it was because of um him understanding and you know Grand Hustle like getting it. So right. when we hooked up and did the first tape where it was all, nigga literally all Tip. Like that was like, I was like, okay, finally here's somebody that I can make the type of project I wanted to make with and we could, you know, do this whole project together because everything pretty much followed that, you know what I'm saying? So he wrapped his ass off. So what was your what was your vision? When you say, okay, whatever you do, right. and this is what you was gonna do, mm -hmm. your 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 stamp, what was the vision that you said, like, all right, this is what I gotta do uh, for these people? A lot a lot of my vision was really just about like was about branding, to be honest. Like even when I was doing them early, like when I started with the tapes, or just even in my career, like from early on, I, I, I start. I, I always wanted to make it seem like I, I watched how people uh, respond to DJs or the music and things like that. And the thing I always hated, like what listening to the radio or going to a party, was like I don't want anybody to leave here and just say, "Yo, the music was good," or right. the, the DJ on the radio is is doing good. Like no, DJ Drama did his motherfucking thing. Right. So even with Gangsta Girls, I was like, "All right, if I can make this brand strong." I can I can kind of create a platform for myself mm -hmm. to even kind of get on and everything. So, you know, on the early tapes, like nobody knew what I looked like and you know, they just heard my voice. Like people used to tell me all the time, like, nigga, we thought you was dark skinned and, and fat. <laughs> like when they heard when we they heard came your voice, out like, light like, like, that's you? Yeah, yeah they Oh, that DJ like, drama, that's like, you? Yeah, that nigga look like he's supposed to be in Shalomar, baby. What the fuck? You got the Shalomar face. You sure you don't drive for DJ drama? Yeah, like, this, 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 this the this the gangster like girl shit? This is Shalomar member. <laughs> So, oh, Shalomar, man. Yeah, Shalomar member, for real. So then, that, you know, and then outside of that, it was just really going against the grain. Like, at the time, the way I was doing my tapes and then the style that was out, people used to tell me, like, when I used to, like, just hand-to-hand -hand them shits, niggas would be like, yo, when you... When you dealing with music from the south people that buy mixtapes they don't want to hear the talk and like up north djs or new shit or exclusives right. or freestyles and all that shit and i was like man shit and me watch how this goes so i i literally applied a format that people said wasn't going to work and you know i started moving with niggas like killer mike doing right. freestyles and bone crushing tip at the time and you know just bringing new shit and that shit was like it, it caught so i was like oh, i'm on to something here like, that yeah, was crazy it, caught. it yeah. definitely caught like you the talking on the mixtape yeah. like you and uh i say bigger ranking yeah yeah like, bigger you got yeah, to know yeah, the bigger, streets bigger, bigger yeah. you can you can nah, feel it no. you can feel definitely the soul can. when yeah. he talk definitely the streets can. Yeah. don't love nobody dog and you like you know what i want to hear this shit again yeah, exactly. that shit back. Bigger, bigger but, it out. but you know what i feel like you was you was the one who kind of like definitely started that you know what 
I'm not gonna allow them to skip the song. Well, I'm gonna tell you, yeah, for sure. Go I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna play it. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'm gonna let y'all get to the hook and guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bring that bitch right back and say another minute before you hear the song and, and I'm tell you speech. why <laughs> yeah. I'm bringing this bitch back. <laughs> and you like, you know what? Read a book because this we listening to a book. Let's go crazy. I would do all types of crazy shit that I was just learning. I remember even on dedication too. This is a part where I play a song, but like, nah, it's too early for that. Right. And make niggas go to another song and then come back to that song. And I just was like, at that point, I was just showing my ass. One thing I feel like I, I brought I to the that. table. I felt it. Yeah, I was sitting there listening, like this nigga just showing his ass. <laughs> yeah, I'm halfway yeah, through like, this month. Like that's how. That's just the, the arrogance of where I was with the shit at the time. I like said I that. could just do whatever. Well, like that. Definitely, definitely should, should give your ass a hand clap. Like because if it wasn't for you, niggas wouldn't have even play that shit back. Man, they would just man. listen to it. It would just it would just sound like a regular mixtape. But you amped it up. And I, I felt like like I remember before me mixtapes like. There's always been DJs on mixtapes and you know shout outs and saying things and everything. But I used to listen to mixtapes and everybody be like, yo, shout out to 125th Street or you yeah, know, shout out to so and so over, over here and all that shit. Right. Paid in full. Right. You already know. Yeah. In the game. You know what I'm you saying? You know, that, that shit like kind of came from that era. So I was like, all right, if I start, you know, if I'm on on top of the music, right. how do I make it where I'm really adding something? So I just started listening to the music and then, you know, saying fly shit, you know, um, like um, every street nigga ain't a rapper, every rapper ain't a street mm. nigga. But if you figure that it out, you know, so cold. like just fly shit that niggas people would add to, to get that. Together, I'm not just talking about real <laughs> niggas. I'm talking about real street niggas. <laughs> Facts, just how it came in too, just like that. So you know, with that, I think that that's one thing that people liked. And you know, once the tapes were coming, they understood like, oh, we gotta get drama and talk that shit. Like right. it's just different. And you, you originally from Philadelphia. Originally from Philly, so, yeah. Well, from Philly, me. So did that. Mixtape influence, like you said, just having that background of being up north. Right. When you came down here, was it hard for people to? Did you have any, res, you know, resistance and people accepting that type of, you know, DJing? A thousand percent. I mean, I, I never. To be honest, I never felt. You know, Atlanta's the type of city where it's just. You know, anybody that comes here or moves here, you, you understand the level of Southern hospitality or love. Right. So one thing I learned early on coming from Philly, I, I always had gotten embraced or, you know, when I, I, you know, I moved here to go to Clark Atlanta. So even, in my, to Clark. so even in my early years, you know, I met people that were doing the similar things that I was doing and, you know, always offered to help a hand. So I was like, it's just, just different from Philly. It's, first of all, we don't have as many outlets. And then, you know, it's just a different energy in a city where you don't you might not have a, a vibrant city like Atlanta with you know so many black people getting so much money at, at young ages and everything so that was different but never like I you know I, I always felt like damn it's really love that I'm you know I'm a kid from from out of town even though I had lived here for some time but getting embraced by the city you know by the music and everything so really the only resistance I ever had if to say anything was like with DJs that we were you know in a competitive sport but even that was you know, that's that's just the competitive nature of it. DJs like, really be beefing. I mean, you know, it's like anything in hip hop. Like it's it's competitive. I'll take your like, motherfucking turn, Yeah, you know, I wanna you know, I'm gonna bust your ass. Like, me. So so okay, okay. <laughs> Y'all <was> stupid. <laughs> Come on, I'll take your turn, Tay. Okay, now listen. Now, you're a DJ now, can you break down the difference between a DJ that just have a a laptop? Yeah. And the ones that used to scratch? Yeah, of course. Or the ones that hosting on a mixtape. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like Yeah, it's a lot of different like DJing is like a, a tree with a lot of branches, like anything, especially like now all these years later after literally you could pick up your computer and you you know you could technically become a celebrity DJ right. if you're not already have it. I've been trying. So, I've been, that's so, that's hard. I salute y'all niggas. So, that's hard. Um so yeah I mean I just look at it like you know there's, there's no rule book to this shit, and I ain't want to say if somebody necessarily could push a button or call them not a real DJ or have you. If you can rock in front of a crowd of people, you know, right. I, you know, I'll salute you. You know what I'm saying? You, I, I'm glad I come from the era where I really had to carry crates, and I was the last nigga in the club. And like, if you ain't had no real friends, you had to carry all them because them shits is is heavy as a motherfucker. Like, and we used to have like have have like five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you had your whole record collection, you had a lot of crates. So, you know, like this era of DJs this gets a lot DJs more women than. Right. Yeah. yeah, you had to. You had to, you had to have an SUV or something with a <laughs> right. truck, a, a trunk in it, or else you wasn't getting around. I remember when I first started getting money, the first car I had was a Benz, and I was like, I'm never going back to SUVs, like because of that. But 
I came from that era of carrying crates, but you know, people don't know that grind because you can just come into the 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 uh, club with a Louis Vuitton book bag and, and it's a rap. yeah, and DJ, fit, yeah, you, with your shit on. Did you have any DJs who you had to carry their crates for them? Did you get I, like ushered into the game that way? I never technically carried any crates for anybody, but um, I had different DJs during my career that like definitely showed me the way. When I was in Philly, it was a DJ named Ghetto who was more like a scratch type. DJ, he used to win like DMCs and everything, cause I, you know, I, I used to study all this shit, so I was into that just as much. I was never that good, that's why I was focused on the mixtape. But then there was a DJ, you know, shout to DJ Mars, who like um, used to really be moving around in Atlanta a lot. Yeah, we fuck with DJ. Yeah, Mars, my guy. So you know, when Mars did the Super Friends, and you know, in the early 2000s, like he he took he pretty he took us under his wing in, in some ways, and I definitely learned some of the game from him and everything. And I remember a time when I was. I, I didn't think anybody was going to ever uh, correlate DJ drama to me because I was like, that word is just too, too popular of a word. Other people use it. And they, ain't nobody going to think about me when they think of that. And Mars was like, nigga, don't change your name for nobody. Right. And then, you know, I, I never forget that advice because I didn't. I was like, all right, you right. And make make everybody come to you with their name. We'll make another nigga change his name. So, right. so yeah, so Mars was an early influence for me. Um, DJ Shaquem, who used to DJ for Bow Wow. You know, I saw all these guys, like, when they were, like, you know, top of the game, and I was kind of, like, you know, just, I was still putting together CDs at, my, at the crib that I was burning from Kinko. So, so yeah, but I, I definitely would salute Mars for, you know, helping help showing me the way and things like that. What do you think is the, the most impactful gangster grill of all of them? If you, um, had to, you know, if you had to pick the, not the, the necessarily the best one, but the one that had the biggest impact the, the, on the game. I, I think it's two. I, my argument... Is between Trapper Die and Dedication to. There you go. I was about to say. Yeah. A dedication. Say, I'm like, dedication ain't that boy. Like, and dedication as a series as a whole is a, is another phenomenon because it's literally six, seven of those. You know, compared to like Trapper Die as a stance still, but to me, Dedication Two is the best one. And then, like, impactful wise, just like Trapper Die. That I mean, that should change my life. Like, that should change the game. You know what I'm saying? Like. Look at where we are now with right. the, the effects of, of Jeezy and that influence of that time. But between them two, like, that shit, you know, can't nobody fuck with me, man. Tell him again. Tell him again. No, talk. I'm done. Hey, hey, I'm done waiting for the new line. That's why we brought you here. I'm done waiting for the new line. That's all. Talk your shit. Nah, yeah, can't nobody fuck with me. How did that Jeezy trap or die come about? Like, was that something that you orchestrated or did it kind of, you know, a lot of things just kind of come together just, you know, by the universe? Was it one of those or did you orchestrate it? Well, interestingly enough, I mean, I definitely think the universe played a part. You know, I used to live in the fourth ward. Um, I used to live on Glen Iris, which is right around the street. Yeah, nigga, right, oh, right, right, right around Glen Iris, right around the corner from Boulevard and everything. So, Co on purpose. Man. When, <laughs> when, Co when Coach, uh, Coach used to live around the corner. That's how I met Coach. He used to live uh, right around the, Coach, on the street man. from me. Shout out to Coach K. And um, um, you know, he came to me like you know in them early days. He was like, Yo, I got this this new nigga I'm working with. And they had just put a project out called Come Shop With Me. And, you know, anybody from that era will tell you the, the old Jeezy mm -hmm. Come Shop With Me van used to ride around the city and everything. So literally, uh, Young used to come to my crib before the Gangsta Grills, and I used to make him show tapes. Um, when he used to come to the fourth ward, I used to just, like, put freestyles on there for him, charge him a couple hundred dollars, and boom, boom, boom. So that's how we first got um, introduced. And then he, you know, he he pretty much, like, like so... Not Trap and Die, but the tape we did before that was called uh, Streets is Watching. That was our first tape. That was literally the first mixtape I ever got paid for. They gave me like $1,000 at the time. And like one thing about what, about Young is that he always had a vision. Like, you know, he, he knew where, like, he had it laid out in a sense. And I was like, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I, I don't think at the time I can definitely admit, like, I never saw it becoming what it became. But, right. you know, Gangsta Grills was already a brand in motion. He was like, yo, I don't even know if you know how much the street's fucking with you. So after we did the first tape, and then, you know, like, it just caught like that. Like, I just started seeing the reaction, and my man told me, like, early on, you know, this is around, this is when T.I. is, like, on top of the world, you know what I'm saying? And my man walked up like, yo, that, that Jeezy tape you did, that's the best Gangsta Grills you ever did. I'm like, the, the new nigga? Like, word? <laughs> and he was like, I'm telling you. So then I started going on the road with them just during the Chitlin Circuit days and seeing the response and reaction mm -hmm. from the tape and everything. So by the time we got to Trap or Die, where we was about to do it, you could already, you could feel in a sense the energy, especially obviously in the city and everything. But when we did that tape, like, I, 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 no, nah, I, didn't, I didn't see it becoming that. Like, 
it was it was life changing. It was every day. Every city I went to, I used to be on the road with Tip. I would hear that shit coming out of every car. Like, you know, I think that, you know, just just to this day, my nigga, I see people all the time that tell me how many years they did behind bars and what gangster girls meant to them in there and how they listened to them and those tapes and everything. Like it just was um it just was special. Like and I, I believe in the universe playing a role in a lot of those things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when the story's told, like a, a, a nigga from Philly literally helped change the sound and the movement of of southern rap when it comes to you know that time and that place of of um of of hip-hop and everything so that's the universe right. point blank period or the fact that i lived around the corner from fucking coach k to even you know introduce you know for him to introduce me to the guy that you know we're going to change each other's lives mm -hmm. hell yeah hell coach yeah. got the game in the head yeah for right. sure Hitty. and has been for some time man i'm you know it's it's it's, it's a if it's a good feeling to see people you came in with like still Steel. doing their motherfucking Steel. thing Steel. you know what i'm saying Shout out to coach k. he always had the game for well, yeah. So you get to a point where you got the, the trap of the the, uh, the gangster grill, the trap of dial. Like, did you at that point did you say, "All right, this is this is what the move is, the gangster grill series"? Like, did what made you say, you know, I'm gonna make it this instead of just going calling a different shit? Like, you had the streets is watching before, right. why not streets is watching? Well, it was it? always still under the gangster grills umbrella, but I knew by that time that gangster grills was the thing that was going take me through there like I had I was like okay yeah I'm on to something with this shit like because I before those tapes I was still they was basically regular compilations like mixtapes right. which is you know songs from everybody so by the time I start getting to that space where you know the, you know guys are coming in and we're doing whole projects like I knew I was um that that was gonna take me in the direction that I wanted to go in with my career and everything and I was just telling somebody this earlier today matter of fact I was talking to um hit maker young Berg and he was just he was hit going me. back He's going back talking about he, you know, I didn't even remember this. He said I tried to, I charged him like thirty grand for Gangsta Grills, and I was like, yeah, I was out of my mind. I was, I was just going. Do you I know was who the getting, fuck I am? I was getting, so I, I was going crazy. Thirty thousand, <laughs> Mr. Thanksgiving. You guys hearing that in, yeah, it, with an echo? In the hood. Yeah, yeah, I see you, bro. I always wanted to see a Kirk Franklin Gangsta Grill. That would have been. That'd hard. be crazy. That'd, That'd be crazy. Raise the roof for Jesus. <laughs> there wouldn't have been you no song. Hit me? There would have been All no. the old bitches in the front row. <laughs> Raise the roof for there Jesus. There wouldn't have been no songs. You wouldn't have had that as soon as he yeah, finished talking. Yeah, me and him would have been going, yeah. back. Oh, you thought it was just going to be you? Yeah, and then nah, I'm going to have to say my shit. Because already knows my time, uh -huh. and it's time to get down. Uh -huh. That would have been, been dope. <laughs> Who's somebody that you wanted to do one with that you never got to work with? Who's somebody I wanted to do one that I never did? Um, me? Yeah, y'all. You yeah, do a you gangster us. With us? I would. <laughs> you would. Yeah. You know, I, you, you want you want to do your solo? He, he basically saying we got to do our solo first. So you want to do some comedy can, shit? Then we man. can double back. He want to do this real shit. Like, no, he sent me some serious. records, but well, he knows where I'm at though. So I don't know if I don't know if he's real about it. We've been having this combo for two years. That's the name of the gangster grill. I don't know if you real about it. Hey, I am the lady. That's kind of hard though. Yeah, you I mean, hear me? I, I, I am the lady. I am the lady. I am the lady. I am the lady. DC mixtape. <laughs> DC know where I'm at. Nigga ain't never put a dollar in me. I am the lady. That's hard. You hear me? Um, let me think. What you charge? Don't say it. I ain't gonna charge you thousand. nothing. Yeah. Ooh, I heard it before. That. He said it on Is you gonna pick up the phone? Yeah, no, uh, why not? You're not gonna pick up the phone for free money. When it's free. We're gonna make, it's bad. It's ways to make money. Oh, yeah, get we got money. it on tape now. I just keep because that's this really yeah. clip over I'll send it to him over and over again. Remember DJ Because <laughs> you know if you don't want you don't pay me up front, then you know you just gotta bust me down on you know what I'm saying. Man, that's what I'm trying, trying to do. Oh. Ain't no jump, man. I've been out here hustling. <laughs> what do you need, DJ Drummer? <laughs> yeah. I am the label. <laughs> I answer to no one. So, so Gucci and Drake was gonna do one together. Were? Yeah, that was going. That was going. We, we, we need to. We need to put that, that in. Was, the oh, you know what? I've never said. I've never. I never told this. The so the beam me up, Scotty. The Nicki Minaj. Ooh. Shout the holiday. That's my brother. But originally, Nicki had hit me about that was that was gonna be her Gangsta Grills. That never mm. happened. Yeah. So that didn't happen. Damn. That Gucci and Drake though. Yeah. Hey, Rob and Drake. Hey. Um, Travis Scott before yeah, the rodeo. Yeah. Okay. That was gonna be a gangster grills. It's a couple it's a couple of projects out there that I might, you know. That's a quick good another question. Do you have to be a gangster to get a gangster grill? No, absolutely not. Damn. Absolutely not. And that was one thing early on with the brand, even when the direction I was going, I was like, I don't wanna I never wanted to necessarily be pigeonholed into that 
per right. se. So I remember when I first did like a table with like Pharrell, I did one with Lil Brother. Like I remember people being like, they don't, that's, how are you going to do a Gangsta Girls with Lil Brother? You know what I'm saying? But I was like, watch this. And I just, I knew that, you know, the brand was where I would be able to take it. So I think I've stepped out enough with it that you ain't, no, nah, it ain't about being, I mean, being the gangsters up here, clearly. Right. So, right. you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that word, yeah. I'm just thinking all kind of shit they could have been. Right. Yeah. Nigga, Mr. Big's Gangsta Grill. That was Ron Osmond, man. Da, 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 oh. da. Some of my best ones is, is like R&B ones. The Jeremiah Late Night's Gangsta Ooh. Grills is fire. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Brown's shit is fire. Like, right. yeah, I done did some good ones with some that, that don't even come in the form of me having to scream over them. <laughs> now, mm. you, you, you know, a lot of people might not know this, but you, the feds came and got you, like, yeah. Can you talk about it? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it's yeah, over with now. Yeah, yeah. I know it's over with me. Niggas don't even like talk about old shit. You straight? No, you I'm good. good. Yeah, the time, right, yeah, enough time has passed. All right, so, so what, how did that happen? I mean, was it because you was, what was the reason behind that? I, I, to be honest, I don't know if I ever found out the real reason behind it. I mean, somebody, somebody was in a position, they was, um, Back in the day when they would have like music stores and everything, I think it was a peppermint was in uh in the mall. What's the mall? I said Morrow. What what's mall is out there? Oh, that's South all. South what? South Lake is out there. Oh. So it used to be a chicken South Lake mall that used to have like one of them stands in the middle where she used to sell mixtapes and everything. And I guess she was booming. So Peppermint called the cops on her like, yo, it's a lady out here selling bootlegs or whatever. So then when they came to her, she was like, nah, these are not bootlegs. Like these is good. I get these from DJ Drama. So I guess they looked into it. Dang. And then they, they like went. To, <laughs> they like went to my website. They started doing some like research and everything. And like you know, I ain't, you know at the time I was like the mixtape king. I was on top of the world. So smash. not in a million years did I ever think about something like that or that that was even possible. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? About to say, right. Like yeah, we it wasn't. Was it wasn't like we was dabbling in no other shit. And like right. so, you know, one one fateful morning, they just they came to the door with them M16s and them them, them guns drawn and. The black Tahoe's up on the on the porch with the helicopters outside and for your music, my nigga, for music, bro, for music, man, not, man. A, not a not a, a, a joint like, or bro, a they fucking nah. the CDs, bro. Nothing. The fuck? They melodies. <laughs> they are called melodies. They told me <laughs> so. Then they and they told me they was they told me I was uh they was booking me for the Rico. So you know this is oh, all nigga, that's what? The fuck nigga the Rico. Rico at? They got me for the Rico for oh, some what Rico. Bro, the next day when I got out and I I was I was on the phone, somebody was was like, Yeah, you checked your bank account? And I was like, nah, for what? I mean, nigga, check your bank account. And that shit said zero point zero zero. Oh, they took everything. Oh my god. They took it. And that was the first time I used I had ever seen no real money. So I used to just look at that bitch every day. Right. Just look at them numbers. <laughs> Just like this, and that shit said 0.00. I cried my little heart out. But I still be crying. In the scheme, in the scheme of things, you know, I mean, I feel like, you know, it made me more famous. Um, right. They put me in a sense of faster than I was already going. Hey. You know, they made me a martyr to the game. And it, I just I just never wanted to feel like, damn, I don't want this culture that I grew up on I love to die on my shoulders. You All know right. what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I just, that was my thing. Like, damn, I don't want niggas to, I don't want mixtapes to die and it be my fault. You know All what I'm right. saying? So, but it was a hell of a time. It was a hell of a situation. But, right. you know, now, I mean, it's for for some things that li literally, like we're talking about, like, that that is the name of the game now. You know what I'm saying? Like everything we're doing was literally what we have been doing at that time. And the law that they actually got me on was some shit they called the true name law, where they said if you make a, a CD, you have to put an address on the back of it. So you remember how the mixtapes used to be? It was a black yeah, just a case, so it black. wasn't no back. So that's what they technically. That was the law so they how did you on. bounce back from that? Like you go from being on top of the world, yeah, looking at the numbers every day. Now your shit is I, in I, the red. I mean, I was still, you know, my 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 shit was in the red, but. I still was who I was, so, yes, sir. and then, you know, it was like, I still, it, it garnished me a lot more attention, like, nigga, they put me on the cover of Billboard after that situation, yeah. so it was like a newfound fame in a lot of ways, and I had, I had yet to put out my first album on Atlantic, I was about to put my debut album out, so, you know, Atlantic was hype at the time, like, oh, you can't pay for this publicity, like, right, right, right. Right. let's, 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 let's use go. this, yeah, so, right. that album came out, together. yeah, so that's how they came, and then, <laughs> You know, so so yeah, I, it never. You know, I even when I would do interviews, I remember thinking like, this is only a chapter. Like right. everybody who goes through anything faces adversity. So right. Right. it really just this ain't scale. nothing. Yeah, you know, God like, is great. You yeah, overcame that adversity and look at you. You hear me? You hear me? I'm talking about you hear me? For some damn melodies, man. But it's like <laughs> some melodies. <laughs> melodies.
I'm Carlos Miller, co-host of the 85 South Show. Hello, fresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips. Hello, fresh. We'll cut out the stress of meal planning and grocery store trips so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on in 30 minutes or less. Hello, fresh. Cut down on grocery bills by saving up to 40% instead of shopping at your local store. Hello, fresh. Hello, fresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients so you're not overbuying, which is a burden on the planet. Which is a burden on my planet. Anytime I need, you know, I order me a nice little, you know, roundabout for the month so I can have my little snack game together. Try to get my life healthy. You get me? Try to get a little freshness. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash 85 South 10 and use the code 85 South 10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, 85 South 10, and use code 85 South 10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh delivers fresh cut and pre-portioned ingredients. <laughs> After going through that and seeing what it did for the culture, do you feel like, like, I don't know, like it could have, like you were chosen for that to push this forward or, or what? Um, or a victim of whatever they thought or what? I'd know. like to. I mean, I, you know, I, my, my glass is always half full. So, right. you know, if I, if I had to be the one for that, like, I guess I'm thankful for that because of my outlook and never knowing that, you know, we're gonna rise from this. Like this, this ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, so yeah. You know, I mean, I'm. You know, I, I love this shit. Like, I, I love it. So, for me to be here and to think back about that and think about like, you know, it's it's a whole it's a whole part of, of people who might know me and never even knew that shit happened. Right. But saying that's just. I never, a, I never knew that shit happened. Yeah, you know, that's just a that's to me that's a pat on the back of the things I've accomplished since then. You feel right. what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I I look at it like that. You know, I put I put everything in um in context. Right. In the albums, how does that work? Like I always see the DJs, you, you DJ Khaled, yeah. like, and you have all these artists mm -hmm. on the the album, and I'm thinking this shit got to cost so much money to yeah. make because you got all these. Right? Is the yeah, budget bigger for a DJ album, or do you just basically like is it all just a phone call? It's uh, it's if you were to pay everything based upon what a DJ album would cost, that shit would. Thirteen trillion dollars. Oh my right, God. it gotta be, bro. I think about my albums and the names on there. So yeah, a lot of it is based on relationships. I mean, there's definitely money involved, but mm -hmm. you know, my budgets have been fair. They ain't been like overly over the top. But you, when you do an album like that, to that extent, you know, labels or whoever whoever your business partners is know you're gonna be have to call in some favors because right. that shit's that's that shit's a pretty that's penny. It. You feel that's what I'm crazy. saying? So, but you know, I, you know, I've been blessed to work with the greats and some motherfucker to say I got so and so on my album. Hey, out of your whole catalog of all this, you know, music you've been a part of, what was the one in your catalog that was like the sleeper that did take off immediately that people kind of had to go back and get? Mm, that's a good question. Um, damn, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I gotta think about that. I'm trying to think if it's a tape or. I mean, that Jeremiah Late Night's mixtape is still pretty fucking fire. I feel like it's a little underrated to this day. Fire. I ain't even that, care. Shit, that shit's special. I never heard that. Before. I'd be able to fire. I mean, but you know, honestly, I technically, in a sense, feel like that with every artist that is, that's tech signed to me or comes from me because, you know, I'm all, you know, one of the things about being in business with me or being a part of my label is I'm gonna promote the shit out of my niggas. So, you know, I, I've, I can look at pictures and look at times when I've, you know, now they're fucking some of the biggest in the world. But, you know, when I was pretty much close on them and nobody knew who they were, per se. So mm -hmm. I guess, you know, everything I'm a part of for my label in a sense, I don't want to say it's slept on, but, you know, I, I catch it from an early point And then just to watch from, you know, those days to where it's become, you know, I think just today, like Uzi tweeted, um, uh, Jay-Z said he's like Prince. So now they're gonna call him the, the new little prince. Mm. And I was, you know, the nigga is. Like he's right. he's different. You know what I'm saying? Did you see that when you first saw Uzi? No, nah, I didn't see this. Like I 
I didn't. Like, I, he was always very confident and always had a vision and a path. I don't know if anybody can see this, though. Like, to this, like this nigga's the fucking alien. Like, he's yeah, just, man, he's yeah. another planet he, he's rock star. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I'd be lying Infinity if I... Stone Salute, on Uzi, what's up, nigga? I'd be, I be <laughs> lying to sit here and say that I, I saw that, but, you know, we knew we he was special, We see that goddamn though. diamond in his head. Infinity Stone. Infinity Stone. crazy, man. They got a whole goddamn pink diamond. Big-ass pink diamond, man. That's yeah. what it is. But, did, like... Being from Philadelphia and Uzi being from Philly, like, did you ever feel like being as though you came to Atlanta, like, all right, I got a responsibility to go back home and get some money now because I didn't did all my work down right. here. 100%. I owe it to the city. Yeah, for sure. And I did. I feel like I did that through the years. And one thing about Philly is like, niggas still be like, nah, nigga, what have you done recently though? Like, the, you know, it's just <laughs> you got to be getting somebody every three months. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, man. Even yeah, man. Come on, man. Get yeah. Your shit. Come so, on, man. This is Billy, man. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've felt that through through a lot of times in, in my career, but you know, obviously for me and Cannon, like, you know, having Uzi as an artist and then, you know, coming out the gate with it and his success and him being from the from the crib, like, yeah, that was special. That was yeah, that shit was special. What's, what's been your fastest turnaround on the mixtape? Um, as far as... The Putting six, it together from start to finish. Um, ooh, that's a good question, too. I was when I used to have to do dedication. My, I was, um, I think like I, I didn't have a lot of time. Like I, I think the, 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 um, the deadline was in a couple Which of days one? or something. Uh -huh. The first one. Yeah, Has it been an artist that requested you be in the studio the whole time they doing this shit? They asked for that, but I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, Why you not? got to be here. I need you. So you do it without them? No, yeah, it's a process. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like. So that. do you listen to the song 100 first? 100 percent, all the time. The whole back and forth. I go into the songs, I listen to them, and I, I think about what I'm going to say. You don't think it's a better pro I mean, why not be there, though? Do you, does that not help the process if you're there when the I don't mind being, no, because I've, I've had some fly shit come out of sometimes when I was there, because I remember what we did, when me and Meek did Dream Chasers 2, we wanted to, ready or not, and I, was, I had some fly shit I, I had just read in Time Magazine or something. I was, it was about sleep, and the tape was the Dream Chaser, so it was like perfect timing, but... Right. So yeah, so there are some times where some good shit comes out of that. I don't know, I just like to be in my own zone, pretty much. How many times have you had to do one where you just be like, this shit horrible, but I got to <laughs> <laughs> You ain't got to name the nigga, that, but. That's the hardest part about music, though. You get a, you get no some, you get like the album. Nah, and they nigga see this, you be like, oh shit. I can't fucking right. get on this. You know what it is? This is some get bullshit. <laughs> this gonna be the best bullshit you ever hear. <laughs> I promise you, no bullshit is better than this. <laughs> From one to ten, ten tracks of straight bullshit. <laughs> Up on this. Yeah, that's classic. Oh, shit. That is crazy. Nigga be like, well, I gotta hear this shit again. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hard, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. That shit hard, y'all. Get down to the shit I'm putting down right here. That shit hard, y'all. the best bullshit you've you ever you heard. This track was bullshit. Oh, wait, wait till you hear the next one. Yeah, yeah. Nigga, I'm like, oh, shit. This shit worse than that? I gotta hear that. This bullshit, y'all. Let him say, cut the car off, my nigga. That's hilarious. What'd he say? Never mind what he said. Cut the car off, my nigga. Oh, shit. Play man. your song. Fuck that. Play Glad. your song. Yeah. <laughs> Just let it run. Right. Just let it run. Did that ever, did that ever happen, though? You ever had that happen? Yeah, like, I think I could count on two hands. I've probably done 500 to 1,000 gangster grills. I probably can count on two hands at times I've. You was like, ah. Yeah. 500 yeah. to 1,000? So so how do you how do you how do you damn it's like five hundred how do you spread it out because I know you have an intro mm -hmm. you might see it go over every song if you like no nah, I, I don't I, I don't want to do that I don't like doing that. right right mm -hmm. you had it so so when you do the intro the middle then the end as time went on and the, the game changed I started going on less and less songs right right but definitely the intro definitely something at the end and then where it, where it fits accordingly I never I don't be one like. I never want to be overbearing. I want to. I want to blend in with the music. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. That's that that's important. That nigga crazy, bro. People have said shit to me like, "Damn, I want Drum to do my, my, uh, be in my graduation, be in my eulogy." You know what you got to do though. Where you, you got to do a GPS though. <laughs> a GPS. Ooh. Nigga, you'll kill it as the GPA. That's, that's GPA. hard. Make a left. Yeah, that's Yo, fine. my nigga, the destination is coming up. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> nigga said you wasn't gonna make it, but look at you. You already did. <laughs> that's fire. 
Nah, for real. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, that's hard. Bro, yeah, that's hard. Yeah, you ever thought about expanding and doing yeah. different shit? Oh, of course. Like, Absolutely. You'd be like Siri yeah. on the cell phone. Your voice Fire. is famous now. Yeah. Yeah. You got to branch off, man. Nah, I would love to do that. You ask Siri a question and this nigga, what it do? You're like, oh, nigga, I'm just trying to figure out this song. That's one of mine right there. That'll be dope, bro. GPS? Yeah, bro. GPS, GPS is crazy. Is on. Don't go up there, the police to the left. <laughs> you got three pounds in the car. Bust a right. Hold up, it's another police. Nigga, just pull. <laughs> They see you start like, speeding a little bit. I know come in. As soon as you get over the speed limit, yo niggas think the police ain't out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about it's a real GPA. Slow that, down, your transmission slipping. All right, exactly, dog. That's genius, that's legendary. Low. It'll be dope. All the DJ niggas, that'll be yeah, dope. Yeah, that's legendary. What that? Niggas, him, bigger rank, and all them niggas on the goddamn GPS. That's My crazy. dog, that's I crazy. see you on your way. Don't slow down. The streets don't love mm -hmm. nobody, dog. <laughs> then I'm going. That's what it is. Have you ever have you I'll ever thought that. about expanding in that capacity, though? Um, I, I play around with it because I know my voice is like you know epic and, and known now. So I'm I'm all for shit like that. Like I, I do shit like you know I do a lot of like voice imaging and voiceovers and stuff like that and other avenues and and yes, things. So I got a real yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. Yeah, I done some cartoons and everything. They had to like stop your, your DJ voice. You like what up, my, <clears throat> what up, my nigga? <clears throat> It, nah, I, I be I be having my shit under control. I be red talk normal more than anything. That's funny. Um, I, I have to remind myself to turn it on. Cause I, matter of fact, that shit happened to me the other day. I was doing some drops or I was DJing or doing something, and then like they wanted me to do a drop at the end, and I turned it on, and he was like, "I it would have been nice to have that energy the whole time." And I was oh, like, "Damn, I, the regular shit was just me. Like that was just, that was just me doing who myself." Is this nigga that say, "Damn, son, where'd you find this?" I don't and know like, who that. Who is that? I don't know who that. <laughs> Well, how do y'all be getting them shit like? So you know, Damn, son, where'd you find this? You know who the Gangster Girls drop is, right? <laughs> Lil John, right? Right, exactly. So Gangster Girls drop is Lil John. You know who the on the cannon, you know that yeah. voice is? Oh. Who? That's um Cannon. That's from the John Madden game. So who does the the voice for Madden with the steps back? That's the, the guy Pat Summerall. Right. That's Pat Summerall's voice. Ooh. Yeah, no, yeah. Cannon. Yeah, that's Pat Summerall. Because really? Cannon was playing a video game and he made a character on the game. It was like, Cannon, steps oh. back, take three. Ooh, that, that's cannon. Oh, that boy cold. Oh, Why Cannon, not all of them? Oh, because the Cannon. DJ Cannon. Yeah, DJ Don Cannon. Oh, I get it. Trendsetter. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Them shits, them yeah, little the drops. drops. Like, do we, do you make your own or is yeah, it like Yeah, everybody makes their own. Everybody make their yeah, own. Everybody okay. makes their own. So what you got new coming out? I know you got some. Man, you know. Um, a lot of artists. Yeah, shit. a lot of artists. Been, you know, the label's been booming. The energy is good. So Jack, Jack Harlow uh, just dropped. Uh, that's what they what all was say. Yeah, well, Jack Harlow was coming on Wild and Out was early. Early, yeah. early, early. Remember, when we did that, when we did Wild and Out, I don't think, I think this he had made what's popping. No, yeah, yeah, no, nah, but we had, it, it that wasn't even moving. That he did it two times. That, like, that oh, yeah, I remember right. he did it. The did first it. time oh, yeah, was, he sure. was extra early. early. Right. You know what I mean? I the second time that. he had started to pop, but that first bit, time but still he was just, yep. he had yeah. SoundCloud. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, it was. No, so that was early on. So, And then um, got a new artist, Seti Hendrix. Seti. Yeah. Go crazy. Go crazy. Dysonville. Dysonville. Go crazy. Duval. Seti is crazy. So. How do you find your artists? Like, do they find you or do you find them? Sometimes they find me. Said I feel like said he found me. I think that would yeah, cause he was at the studio. He said he wound up sneaking in like a couple times before that. So he found me. Um, he snuck in the studio. Yeah, he snuck in. Well, you got a mobile. Oh, wait, man. How, how, you, how, you, how you how you do that? Said how you sneak in the studio, nigga? I snuck in the studio. Engineer uh, David. Come Shout on, nigga. David. Oh, say that, say that. Nigga, he whispering in this shit. Oh, this is the artist right here. Daddy <laughs> <laughs> Hendricks in the motherfucking game. Daddy! Get your ass in here, Daddy! What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Talk your shit, gang, Daddy. I snuck in this shit. Fuck it, I'm a son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, bet. I snuck in the studio on through an engineer named David. You feel me? He from Jacksonville, too. But um, after that. Oh, um, so he ate it inside. No, he kind of told me, he was like, listen, once before we <laughs> I told him, I told him, <laughs> I'm going to be just getting the story the first time now. <laughs> he had done went there twice already, and I'm at the house, and I'm like, you know what, bro, you're not just going to be that, telling me you going to DJ Drama Studio. The third time, I'm going. And right. he's like, nah, I'm like, I'm going. Right. So he said, all right, when I go and I go in, I don't know you. I say, cool. <laughs> so I go in that motherfucker, when I walk in, you know what I'm saying, he go his way, I sit on the couch. Um, 
meet this one dude, feel me? Oh, as soon as I see him, you know I da 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 Right. Oh, let's go, but let me hear the music real quick. I play him these songs, molded me, and um, he gave me the whole, the usual, yeah, yeah, gave me a card, never heard from him again. Right. I come back, you feel me? I meet Willie Joe, you know what I'm saying? Willie Joe is like, he heard play him the same songs. So he like, oh, nah. He put me in the studio, let me hear some right songs, OMBPs, and bring me to a video shoot. Then I meet him, right. Willie Joe. And then John heard my music and was like, all right, I want to see if you can do it again. He heard some more and was like, he, I, want, I need him. It's, it's a rap. Yeah. It's a rap. Fucking right. Stay down, gang violence. That's how you do that shit. Pull it back up. You hear me? What you mean? Damn. No, go back in there. I thought when you said snug in the studio, like the nigga leaned on the wall and wait on the door, then close, snug and fool in that bitch. <laughs> nah, nigga would have seen that. They was like, hey man, who the fuck just snug in there? I know, like, I know. I see you. I know. But listen, it did sound like that, right? Right, right, right. right. You put your ear to my phone. That would have been a hell of a story if it, did, it happened like that and I signed a nigga off that. Yes. We had people at the I mean, door damn all the time. Damn, 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 damn. Like, but see, but when you seen drama, when you seen drama, but they seen a pump. Oh yeah, stop for sure. Pump. Yeah. You like, I can't. Uh -huh. I gotta stop the pump. You know, yeah. I, I know he hit though. He in there. He's somewhere. Uh -huh. I like how you brought up Willie Joe because that's that's Black History, bro. Right. That nigga Willie Joe looked out. Yeah. What? Did that nigga Willie Joe out, Drip. bro. His Willie name Joe Willie Joe. Joe. <laughs> he come from a long history of <laughs> niggas that looked out. <laughs> 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 Willie Joe ain't the type of nigga that do some shit with you, right. but he ain't gonna stop you from doing it. Right. Right. I'm gonna come in there and kill him now. Right. I ain't gonna tell him. The front door will be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you have to hear? Like all the music you did, you say you did a thousand mixtapes. Right. What what do you have to hear to say that's that's it? I, yeah, for sure. I feel like <laughs> as much as I gotta trust my ear, I don't trust my ear. So mm. if that makes sense. Like I, all right, so boom, like you say, what do I have to hear? Like right. I'm not fucking I'm not the know-it-all be-all, so it's shit that's, if I listen to it, I might say like, you know what, I don't really hear it, but I'm also 42 going on 43, like, I'm not supposed to, so if that's not for my ear, yeah, let's rock with that, let's see where that go, you see what I'm saying? And like he said, I, want, he wanted, I wanted to hear it again and like get an understanding. Now, I ain't gonna lie, said he shit I liked off top, there was no, he made the type of music I listened to, but there's other artists that per se like, that are huge right now that I remember the first time I heard it I was like eh but I was I was open enough with myself to understand like you yeah, know grow on you. yeah everybody that's is what different. I was about to ask what's more important the music that they're currently displaying or the star power because some motherfuckers mm. they might not be where they need to be musically but they are certified star right well I think that's interesting because what a star is now is different from what it used to be like what mm. we think right. a star looks like or sounds like or how a star comes like comes in that form so you know that in a sense is that makes it in, in different when you hear people's music because there's a lot of musicians now in 2021 or even the last couple of years that people might not say look like a star off top you right. know what I mean like right. or 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 just how they come in so you know the music speaks volumes in a sense at itself you know what I mean like I mean look at our like at Cardi for an example, like, you know, like from from where she started as, you know, on Instagram and her personality, like she had the personality of right. a, a, star. Of, of, exactly. of a star, period, right. but it wasn't the music wasn't attached to it. So in her sense, you know, that work where the star power overpowered enough to where the music kind of caught up per se. But it, somebody it, you, it you missed on, somebody that you heard and, and, and had the opportunity to, to jump on and you was like, I don't, I don't see it. But. It's a couple. That happens. There's a couple? <laughs> just give her one. You ain't got to give her there, but just give her one. Um, I really wanted to sign Tory Lanez. Ah! And, me, you know, me and Tory got a great relationship. Um, but it, I also don't know if I feel like things work out how they're supposed to work out, so. So yeah, so you know, that was before we kinda had generation now kind of move in and you know what I mean? So right. it worked out how it was supposed to. Generation oh, oh. Now, where did that name come from? That name was actually a mixtape that me and Cannon came up with because we was doing a tape with with this new guy that wasn't really gangster grillish, but like he had some shit to him and he was a producer and he gave me some drops to host this tape. And then I was like, damn, like we work with this guy. This ain't Gangsta Girls, we call it something else. And me and Ken was like, damn, so we, Kanye West is hosting the tape, the new nigga. 
And then we was like, let's call it Generation Now. So the first Generation Now has Kanye and Joe Button on the cover. That was a mixtape we did in like 03, 04. You just that don't skip over that shit. You know, Kanye shit. West, that was the new nigga. That Damn. Generation, the first Generation Now mixtape we ever did was hosted by was by Ye. And this is like before college dropout and all that shit. Damn. Damn. So that the name literally comes <clears throat> from his movement of what he was what I envisioned at the time, you know, just generation now, like this is what's what's up next, like this is right now. And then I literally sit, we sat on the name for years until it was time to like start the label. And it was like, yo, generation now is perfect for what we represent. Okay, Let me no, ask I was you, this. you lost a lot of music, right? Yeah, I, I, at times. I'm I mean, saying like when that shit yeah, happened. Yeah, when the raid happened, yeah, hell yeah. So what was some of the shit that you had that you, that's, that's gone? That's gone in the wind, yeah. some Wayne verses. Um, damn, what songs? It was a couple songs, but on the other side, what I didn't have at the time was the Outkast record. I had been trying to get uh, Andre to, to fuck with me for like the last like seven, eight months because they agreed to do a song for me because we were supposed to do a mixtape. We were supposed right. to do Outkast Gangsta Grills. Damn. And then they, had, they got kind of busy, but they was like, yo, we'll give you a record for your album. And I was like, all right, bet. So I started sending uh, Dre like, beats literally from everybody that was anybody in the game and he was like passing on them so then after this the raid happened i went to canon and i was like yo can you i well, canon had canon had made this beat for me that that was kind of similar to um something else that but that was out by jim jones at the time so i went to marsha ambrosis i was like listen i need a hook that's gonna be like yo nothing can stop us like we can't be stopped like you know we gonna still be here she banged this shit out and i sent it to uh three stacks and like literally he was like, yo, I'm going to hit you back tomorrow. And he sent me this fucking verse for the artist storytelling for, you know, for this record I got with him and Big. And it was like, I just, you know, that, that, that my, that's my favorite group of all time. Like, right. you know, Andre 3000 is literally the GOAT. Um, Outcasts the goat. are the GOAT. So, right. you know, just to have them on my record, my debut album, and for that song to come out, it was like, this shit's crazy. The, you, the universe again. That's dope. It's crazy. It's probably some FBI Agent Sun riding around listening shit, to all right? unreleased Wayne verses. <laughs> <laughs> never heard this, bro? Get in the car, bro. Get in the car, bro. I got something you ain't never heard, bro. You know, this gangster grills, bro? Get in the car, bro. Hey, bro, you listen to rap? Take this. Uh, that's this funny. Black guy in Atlanta, no fight. That's funny. <laughs> so what was that surprise? Like, what was the surprise person that hit you that you never thought would want to be a part of your series? Well, then it. Artist that came to you. I'm saying like motherfuckers like what you you want to fuck with me? Um, I mean I know this is probably like a literally this is not politically correct right now, but when Kells called to do a Gangsta Grills, like that was damn. I was like this nigga R Kelly wants to do a Gangsta Grills. Kelly wanted to do a Gangsta Grills. Yeah, that's the one that had that Yo, Sex Trump. Olympics on it. Yeah, I remember that Sex Olympics. I, that was one of my favorite. I wasn't gonna say nothing, but since you said it, fuck it. <laughs> What? That was my shit. I ain't gonna hold you. You know what I'm saying? That shit was cold, shit nigga. Was that the limit? Nigga, the, no, the just R. the Kelly whole shit was, yeah, he was, was amazing. Yeah, it was fire. Yeah, so that, that, yeah, definitely, that, was that, that, that definitely was one. Like when you get those songs from them artists that's legendary already and you get them and now it's up to you to put your spin on it and put your flavor on it. Is it more pressure when it's a legendary oh, artist? Oh yeah, 100% it's a lot of pressure. But I also know they come to me for that reason. Like, you know, they, you know what I mean? They, they reach out because they know I'm the bells and the whistles. Like, my kitchen is better than everybody's kitchen. Like, I'm Chef Boy Art Drum, you feel what I'm saying? Like, they, they come with the chicken. I put that bitch in the oven. I turn that bitch to 375. Like, my season is it's impeccable, you know. Right. When I, so when I deliver it, they like, oh, this is perfect. This Anybody is what I want. Like, this shit disgusting, nigga. Do it <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> like, night, what? Jeezy mixtapes. So every time me and Jeezy would do a tape, I was so used to him. Like, whatever intro I did, I know he was going to come to me and be like, yo, you got to come harder. You got to come harder. So once, so a couple times, like, yeah, so I you, <laughs> we so, ain't got no insurance, so get your ass up. <laughs> so a couple times when we did tapes, the first time I would do it, I wouldn't give my all because I knew I was gonna have to do it again. Mm -hmm. So I would just say some shit, and then I go in. He'd be like, "You gotta come harder," and I'm like, "All right, bet. Let me put the real shit on there now." So, so, if you, so even if you was to just be like, you know what, I'm gonna just put some eye shit, he'd be like, "Boy, that shit hard." You like, damn, hold up. Oh, I, I really want to do something else. Yeah, yeah I kept it there. I'm like, all right, but I say this shit for something else. Say no more there. Seti, like, with you being a newer artist, like, is it pressure on you knowing that there's so much history behind who you're working with? Like, 
or you already had that you know that that major influence of wanting to just be great or do that motivate you more? Bro, it's, it's, this nigga snuck in the studio. Mm-hmm. You think he? You think he feel any yeah, pressure? Ain't about <laughs> <laughs> he ain't even worried about that shit, gang. Yeah, I'm out. He asked for this life. Exactly. Like I knew what came with knowing that. Um, especially coming from Jacksonville, Florida. Like, I already knew what I was signing up for. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I knew to separate myself. I knew I was going to be, he wasn't finna take no, no bullshit. Like, if I was finna come with him trying to sign it, I was finna have to come with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And know that, you feel me? He done so blew a lot of people. So when you realized that moment was like, all right, this is it. This is all I work for. Yeah. I got to go crazy. We in the studio, and Joe like, matter of fact, Joe, Joe, Joe. Come we in, Joe. Joe. We in, Joe. Joe. <laughs> hey, man. Joe, man. Joe. Joe. Living up to the name. Joe, 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 Joe. And like, hey, you feel me? John supposed to be popping in. You feel me? Da, 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 da. So just, you know what I'm saying? You feel me? Gave me a little prep. So I'm not even, we got the camera in there, HD facts in there. I'm not even, we just played a song. I'm just finishing the song. He busting in the B room. He just walk in. Like, what's up, bro? Now, at first, this was John. I don't know that I peeped by the door. At first, he, you feel me? He, he dap everybody up. He see me, he, what's up, bro? Oh, yeah, you the pit yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, Woo! what's up? So I, I bet. Before Corona? Yeah, way before. Dang. Way before Corona. Oh, that's true. Uh, yeah. Hit me right. with the boom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I say, all right, bet. The little camera, he, but he, he hear the music, like, let me hear some music, hear some music. Right. And go crazy, he automatically rocking with it. He auto- Hold yeah, you know them bitches real. Oh, my father. Oh, oh, what's up? Yeah, man, he, uh. Some R on that bitch. He, uh. Yeah, though, he heard music first time, was just like, man, I'm yeah. on it. Yeah, music yeah, right, was cold. From the very first time you heard it, you were mm-hmm. like, first time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, said he, won, said he like my favorite, like, in rap. Gang shit. Gang shit. Mm-hmm. Right, that right, too. That's dope. Yeah, that's I'll do dope shit, right gang. There. How old you here, fool? I just turned 25, January 20th. January 20th. I was born in 1996. That was in 90, baby. 90, baby, doing their thing. You hear it? Man, let me ask you this. What's up? Somebody might be watching this that ain't never heard none of your music. Like, why do they need to hear it? Soul for reality street music. Okay. Right. I represent, mm-hmm. I represent you, I, I'm not, you gonna learn something, I'm gonna drop some jewels, I'm gonna get you through something. You feel me, you gonna be able to relate to me. And whether we talking about the ladies, whether we talking about the streets, whether we talking about what's going on in the world. Ladies in the street. All of it. Okay. So, so what you song, if, if you if do had to have one song for all those people who don't know you, what song would be the song that you direct them to to listen to first? To give them that vibe of what you talking about. Hands down. Hands down. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Hands down. Yeah, what's that? Florida Nights. Florida mm-hmm. Nights. Cause I'm a nigga. That, I'm shit. gonna look at it, gonna look mm-hmm. look up all oh, that shit. Florida Nights go hard. Oh, I fuck with Florida Nights, you know, yeah. Or Mo Yo, I think you're like Mo than me. Mm-hmm. She just shit. sent it to me. I listened to the whole goddamn yeah. thing. Hey, sure. Okay, okay. So you in the game now. Now you in the game, you you there. It's rap. Who do you look at as like? Motivation and be like, I want to work with just on some the artistry, the, the, the aesthetics of it. You feel what I'm saying? Right now, right now, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep it a honey. I, I, Brett Fires, mm. who Brett Fires, that's Brett it, right? Mm. That's it, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah, yeah Brent Fires. Yeah, I don't Brent know Fires. if he's Brent Fires. The way the way Jit yeah, move, like the way he move with it, right? The way he even on from Instagram to, 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 to the way his he push himself, like everything. He lay, he out there, you don't know how he coming, but you know he coming. He coming. For sure, for sure. Yeah, okay. That's how I been moving my whole time in the industry. I peeped that in him. So, you know what I'm saying? That right, too. Okay. If you could do a song with one legend, who would it be? Michael Jackson. There you go. Hell yeah. Bro, Michael Jackson, the coldest motherfucker that ever. I was going to say Tupac, but... Bro, you know what I'm saying? Same, same, yeah, same, 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 can you talk your talk, DJ Trevor? You'd love to do a Michael what? Jackson gangster grill. Oh you? my God. Yo, Mike. A Tito Jackson. Mm. <laughs> nah. Tito just coming in and probably do it himself. Yeah. I might have passed on the Tito, man. Yeah. My bad, Tito. Tito got it. Tito, Tito whoop your ass. shit out you now. <laughs> Tito got a Tito bang. got a belt that still do this shit. Ha, ha. I'm like, that nigga only for. <laughs> <laughs> is there any like the, speaking of uh, artists like young artists like do you do you have to tune out your your own personal liking the music to get 
into the young people shit. I hear a lot of guys who've been in the game a long yeah. time say that, like, I can't get into that shit. Like, so how do you nah, get into I mean, I don't know if it's because I'm a DJ or what, but I, I feel like I'm, I've navigated gracefully through, like, through music in a sense where, you know, it might not be what's from my golden era per se or what I listen to, but I, I love new. I'm addicted to new shit. I always have been. So, and I'm thankful for that because it keeps me. It keeps me feeling fresh and vibrant, and you know, like, and you know, I ain't like. They keep me young. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't gotta run around and try to be 21 or 25. I can, but I, I fuck with a lot of young niggas. So you know, I, I can stay in the mix. But a lot of the shit that's come out to me is, you know, it's hip hop. Like it ain't all. It might not all be for my ear, but I get it. You know what I'm saying? So. I probably I probably listen to more young nigga shit than most people my age per se. Or, I mean, I don't know. Us in the music business, I feel like you have to. If you don't, like, this just ain't this ain't it for you. Like, yeah, the game will pass yeah, you by. Hip hop right. is a young man sport, so right. it's just All different. Yeah. I think every every genre and every uh, what you what you want to say generation had this time when yeah, niggas you got like, to. man, I don't want to hear that for shit. Sure. You feel what I'm saying? If you Absolutely. go look at yeah. all every the history, time. Well, even been. with the Tupac and Biggie, it was yep. a time when motherfuckers like, man, I don't want to hear that shit. It's See, so sex. we gotta we is in that time right now, but mm. we just gotta embrace it. Yeah. I don't yeah, like that. Look. I'm Carlos Miller, co-host of the 85 South Show. Life is too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you've looked at some retailers and calculated the years of interest you'd pay on just one set and gave up. Trust me, check out Brooke Linen. Brooke Linen was started by Rich and Vicky, who also tried to find beautiful home essentials that didn't cost an arm and a leg. And when they couldn't, they found it Brooke Linen as the first direct-to-consumer bedding company. They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. And Brooklinen is so much more than sheets. They've got comforts, pillows, and towels, and even loungewear, and more. Brooklinen has a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and taste. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. They are so confident you will love their products, they even offer 365 day money back guarantee. So look, I'm on the website and I use the promo code, ordered me some new sheets. I got some, some it's this real soft material. It makes me feel like, like I'm learning from myself or something. I don't really know the way to, like Brooklyn and they, I never had these kind of sheets that I have now. It's kind of like, it's like a corduroy, but not a hot corduroy. It's the soft, it just look like corduroy, but it's soft. It's my, I call it my nap blanket, but don't worry about what I be doing. Go to brooklinen.com, use promo code 85SOUTH to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code 85SOUTH. Hey, what's up? It's Carlos Miller, co-host of the 85 South Show. If you have multiple credit cards, you know that tracking multiple balances, due dates, and website logins can be stressful. Upstart makes things simple with one monthly payment in one place. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment plan. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash 85 south. That's upstart.com slash 85 south. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash 85 south. Like people that. don't understand that that's always been the point of right. you know hip hop music. You don't you're not supposed to like the shit right. that your parents yeah, like. Fashion. So if you're even if your parents like hip hop, you're not gonna like the same, same shit. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. You know that's like the blues to mm -hmm. you know. Right. But I think that gap should be bridged. Like like what you said, the perspective you have is dope because the older people who have that music and the younger people, if we had a more open mind, mm -hmm. and, right. you know the game would be open. Like I see all the rock and roll artists that can still go mm -hmm. out and and sell out arenas. And, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To this day, mm -hmm. and they 
60, 70 mm. years old, but for something to be for a hip hop artist, like, man, get your old ass right. off the stage. Nobody <laughs> wear that shit, nigga. <laughs> Fuck raw with your old ass, nigga, old bitch ass. Nobody wear that old man, hippie that hop shit. 30 years <laughs> ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think, and then in the same way with, old, with the older generation, where they say, man, nobody want to hear that shit. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is he saying? He just moaning on the track. That shit right. sounds stupid. Like, if we could bridge that gap, like, I think that, you know, it'll help our music. Last long. No, I agree. If we appreciate it, right. they appreciate mm -hmm. it. I definitely agree to that. I ain't listen to that, that, that rock and roll bullshit. You ain't? Them niggas be out there, they, no, all that money cash shit. Why they yelling? Shut the, the whole fuck point. up. They hurt. Yeah. 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 screaming, you screaming, bitch, this ain't art. It's some other shit. <laughs> it's some other. But salute, some, if y'all make they millions, got, they, got this, they, they, they hate. make the same type of music <laughs> niggas make. They it's just, the just same, sound different. The same yeah. same concept. They got the strip club music. Girls, girls, girls. That's they shit, yeah. Pour some sugar on me. Yeah. If you want some love, that's, that's art. That's, See, that's art. Shit. That's art. Rock and roll community. They ain't talking hey, about the other shit. Rock and roll hard. They be talking the same shit rappers be talking about. Yeah, they do. Like it's it, just in a whole different It's in an up tempo. It's, it's real fast. Slow the fuck down. You ever wanted to do a rock and roll game? They on drugs. I think I did one. Me and Cannon did one. I forget the name of this Lincoln group. Park? Nah, it's, it's, it, I forget the name of the group, but they they kind of known now. I got to ask Cannon about that. What genre would you jump into if, if you could? Like one that you haven't done that you think would be dope for you to Oh, fuck? definitely in the Latin genre. Oh, techno. Sure. Yeah, like, you do some techno? He ain't done that yet? I don't, I don't think techno exists anymore. He look Cuban. Yeah, he look he like a Puerto Rican. What is that? Daddy. <laughs> he be like, Daddy Yankee. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, them Daddy Yankee type. Techno, Daddy techno Yankee. the old nigga version of EDM? Daddy yeah. yeah. Run that shit I, back, Daddy Yankee. <laughs> I don't think they hurt the motherfucking gasolina, nigga. Who that I got so No, Fire. no, no, nigga. <laughs> Say it in English. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I ain't did, I ain't did nothing, I ain't did nothing in the Latin world. In the Latin world. Yeah, that'd be so, fun. Yeah, we putting that out there, all the Latin artists. Reggae tone. Reggae yeah. tone, it'll be a dope, that gangster Brian grill, man. It's a legendary man. series, come get you one. Uh -huh. They got this uh, Latin rapper, he blowing up right now. Uh, what's his name? Who? Mm -hmm. Nah. He's on. The one Jay-Z just gave yeah, up What's his name? Oh, Jay Balvin? Yeah, Balvin. yeah he oh, killing. Yeah. Oh, I'm going stupid. Jay Balvin is huge, he just did some shit with McDonald's, if I'm not mistaken. Niggas is big. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, shit, man. Shit, yeah, nigga, nigga, ain't no exit, nigga. It ain't nothing like, it just, just go leave, on nigga. Get in your car. We be like, all right, y'all. Shit, yeah, man, this shit can go on forever. Right, it's not, the history is just expensive. 500 to 1,000 gangster grills. What's y'all favorites? Dedication. Oh, oh man. Dedication, like, Damn, that R. Shit. Kelly, I, that's one of mine. Dedication, dedication, dedication three. Dedication oh. 3 is hard. Dedication 3. Oh. Dedication what's, what's the one with the red and him leaning on the car? Black or white? It, it got red in it, but he, he leaned on they the car. They all got red. I think, I don't know. He had the big ass pants on that long ass belt hanging off. I'm like, God damn. I, I, <laughs> I told you my two. I like Slick and then, um, Mac Bonin. Yeah. The DK one with T.I. Uh, with T.I. All he said tip that, shit. Where he said that line, he said, uh, uh, I'm Huey Newton. With a uh, what do you say? I'm Huey Newton with a PhD, or maybe Martin Luther King with a GAT. That's one of the fire. hardest lines I think that was down with ever, King. nigga. Let me see them sweatsuits. I got some sweatsuits for y'all too. Welcome back. Yep. Yep. Real nigga, you done bought some clothes, nigga. Hell yeah. Hell, I'm talking about. Ain't nobody ain't bought no clothes. What you got? New face. New face uh, new? actually that, brought some. That's Willie Joe, by the way. Willie Joe. Willie Joe. Willie Joe. Hey. Actually brought some gangster hey. grills. Some real authentic. Yeah, man, I want that one, man. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. My brother, yeah, that's my guy right here. I know he got all your spoke about this moment, right? Woo! Oh shit. Ozone yeah. magazine. Yeah, this after they uh before it was the gangster grills. Yep. Welcome to the Shrab again. This tape, Ooh, when, I was still man. moving them on campus myself when I did this one. Pee Wee Longwell, that's one of my ones too. Yeah, that yeah, that blue Eminem. Public album. Run around the lobby. 
Ball MJG. Oh, yeah, that's my first album. My new fable, we gonna get you a museum, Willie, boy. Right. It's all right, yeah. Damn, Willie the Kid, Willie. first shit. Willie, well, Willie, Willie, the kid. Willie the Kid? Yeah, I remember Willie the Kid. I remember that was our first the artist. Kid. Where Willie the Kid from? He from Michigan. But yeah, I thought Willie the Kid was from St. Louis. Nah, he from Michigan. Man, Classic. Jesus, oh, yeah. Snowman. This is where I, I came up with Mr. Thanksgiving on that one. I had that, I had that one. Yeah, that boy. Blood Rock. Man, how you ain't got no dust or nothing on these motherfuckers, man? The Bird Friend. Oh, the Bird Friend was classic. Oh, yeah. That's classic. Damn, look how long my shirt was. Yeah, look how long the chain was, nigga. Fuck. What year that was? It's like 07. Yeah, May 2007. This, was this the beef? They was giving them out of measures. Oh, damn. This yeah. one they was beefy? Oh, yeah, probably so. Who? With, with Lou and Tip. Uh, yep, I was yep. around that time. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Damn. Oh, you did both of the diss tracks, didn't you? Nah, I just was, I was rock, I was, I was Grand Hustle at that time. Right, 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 right. I was, damn, it's classic. Get you up. Oh yeah, go ahead. Like, what does it feel like to see all this work? That's like, does this, does this put it in perspective for you of how much work you done laid down? Yeah, it's it's pretty uh it's pretty humbling and inspiring and just you know, I'm I'm appreciative. It's, but it's like I was telling somebody even back then, my go I remember thinking like, all right, nigga, you got here, how you stay here? Cause by this, it's the product, right? Real. It's okay. Well, I mean, that's bootleg the spice being right around the corner. They used to, yeah, yeah. They used to bootleg all this shit right around the corner. Some of the bootlegs are that's actually it. the real cop. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, the, how was how did that work? The would you? I would let them rock, rock. I didn't give a fuck. Because the more bootlegs just meant the more people they want, more right. people wanted it. Right. So for me, it was like, man, uh, the more the merrier. Flood the streets with that shit. That's the So I used to always, man. anytime I used to see bootlegs, I would get excited. I'd be hyped. Well, we'd be crazy as hell if we didn't ask you, what advice would you give somebody who's trying to get into the music business? I know a lot of people ask you, yeah, like young artists and sure. producers and shit like that. So Honestly, man, I just think, you give? I think everybody should just trust the process. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we all... Stay the course. You got to stay the course and you got to, you know, if you really love it and you're passionate about it and, you know, like... You know, it's definitely important to have good people around you, you know, and, and when I say good, I don't want to put too much definition on that because good can come in a lot of different ways and, you know what I'm saying, and and I, I just think it's important to have real people around you in, in some form or fashion. Nobody does it alone, you know, know that you're going to have missteps and know you're going to have ups and downs and everything, but I just think in today's day and time, like, it's, you know, there's so many different, we have so an abundance of so much but it's also a blessing like when i was coming up or a kid i didn't all we had was the radio at 10 o'clock where i could hear rap shit and right. catch rap city and yo mtv raps other than that i just had to wait till the next time like we have everything we have y'all podcasts we got other podcasts we got you know you go on youtube look up your favorite video so with that being said it's just it's you know the, there's no reason why um you can't create opportunities or find find creative ways in anything and you know you got to walk a fine line like there's a fine line be between being persistent and annoying you know when you're trying to get your business off and introduce yourself to people but um but yeah man more than anything I, I just say like you said walk the course and trust the process you know and do it because you love it and then you know make something with it means something to you like I think about so many things just in Atlanta alone like Atlanta is such an amazing city of how many people have come from this city just really trying to impress their neighborhood and right. have turned into like global stars and made these these records that like you feel what i'm saying like yeah. I, I think about a record like swag surfing all the time like in a million years did travis they, porter did they ever the, think like went crazy. that right. that was going to be, become what it became like right. to the extent and represent what it represented so you know time will tell man and salute to you for having a hand in all of that no, man. you played a major part in all of this Coming together, man. This is this is hard. This is history. Like you know, what I mean, see, I just know for me, seeing all of these CDs and just remembering, you know, the CD case and riding and, and going through, and then you get that new, that new Gangsta Grills, man. And when they go on the CD player, it just you know you about to hear something that's gonna make you not go home straight away. Like I gotta ride around for a little bit because I gotta hear this in the car. Yeah. Like, and that's Mission amazing, accomplished. man. Salute to you, bro. Well, good looking, y'all. You, you and DJ Envy talk. Yeah, that's my guy. All right, yeah. yeah. We, we about clown him about that shit all the time when we yeah, go up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was legendary. Yeah, man. Because this shit went. Me and DJ Drummond, you know we always good. Yeah, nah, that's my guy. We definitely fuck with him. Every time we go up there, you was sitting over that bitch. Like, Envy was wrong, man. Okay. 
talk about it. So like I said, yeah, <laughs> we're right into it. Yeah, yeah. Man, we hey. fuck with them up there, man. Nah, but let me hey. tell y'all for and congratulations to y'all and salute to everything that y'all doing. Thank you, brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, kudos. I know skies the limits. You know, incredible things, man. You know, we supporters, we fans, whatever y'all need on our end. For hey sure. man, close hey. us out this well. Oh man, hey, that's come close. on, close us out one time. Hey yo, listen, man. Once again, man. <laughs> It's the 85 South Show. Y'all know what the fuck is going on. Shout out to Seti Hendrix. Je Seti Hendrix Generation Now is here. Loso. We out this BC. Man. You did. You know what I mean? What you want to tell him? What I want to tell him? Chico. What I want to tell him? Shit, nigga. We got the motherfucking International Gangster Grills coming. Featuring DJ about. Drama, whoever come, and me. I'm speaking Spanish on that bitch. You speak Spanish? Like Chico. 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 I'm speaking like Spanish. We gone. Like we that. gone. Oh! Hey, we gonna run this next. Oh, I know that you got a problem. I appreciate you, OG. My nigga. I love. This shit always. Love. Damn. Come on, shout it. Motherfucker, beat me to it. You ain't got a shit in there, do you, nigga? Huh? I got one more. Huh? One more? Yeah. This one bathroom, man. Go ahead and do your thing, nigga. I just got a fifth. Show me. Show me. Shit. Hold up. You know I went wrong with some shit. That show you that shit you did one time.